Welcome to the personal brand session of JA Career Success. In this session, we're going to be talking about your personal brand. So let's start off by considering some popular brands like Nike, Apple, and Ferrari. When you think of these brands, what comes to mind? For Nike, it may be sports or the swoosh logo or athletic gear. For Apple, maybe it's technology. And maybe Ferrari, it's speed. Companies do a lot of research and spend a lot of money to develop a brand image that is positive and that people will remember. As a job seeker, you'll need to develop your personal brand as well. Think about it. What would happen if an auto manufacturer used images in its ads of a car that was dirty or damaged? That's what many job seekers do without even knowing it when they are careless about the paperwork they submit for a job or careless about the reputation they are building as a future employee. When job hunting, several things stand out to a potential employer. Their first impression of you will come from your cover letter and resume. You should spend plenty of time building your cover letter and resume to ensure it reflects your brand in a positive way. JA volunteer Paula Hawks is now going to share some additional information regarding cover letters, resumes, and digital profiles. Hello, my name is Paula Hawks and I am the Career Services Coordinator here at Southeast Tech in Sioux Falls. I want to go over a few basics for cover letter and resume writing for you as part of your junior achievement presentations for spring of 21. To start off, let's talk about cover letter basics. Uh, when you're looking at writing a cover letter, this is going to be your first impression for an employer. And so you really want to take the time to write a letter that is putting across the best picture of you for that employer. So you want to write a formal letter with very good grammar and sentence structure. You want to make sure that it is written professionally and that it is personalized to the hiring manager and the job itself. So you really want to put some effort into finding out who is going to be making that hiring decision. If you can get a name, if you can't get a title, if you can't get a title, then you want to address it to the hiring manager saying, dear hiring manager or dear HR professional. You want to be concise and simple in your cover letter. You don't want to get too wordy. You don't want to be too um, detailed, but you want to give them enough information to give them a reason to want to come in, have you come in and interview with them. Tell a little story about yourself and your skills. It's not just repeating what your resume already tells them, but telling them a little bit more about the reason that you're the best applicant for the job and what it is that you have done to prove that you can do the job and what you have done in the past to show that your skills are strong. Um, and then of course, as with anything, you wanna have somebody proofread that for you so that you make sure you're putting best um, effort into your cover letter and make sure that you're putting forth the best product for that employer. Moving on to the resume, some basics around that include using a simple, easy to read font, something like Times New Roman in a 12 font is going to be your best choice. It's easy to read and people are familiar with it um, and it makes it um, a little bit um, more generic towards uh, writing that resume for um, use in applying for a job. Avoid online templates. It's really easy to go to Google and say, hey, Google, show me um, a resume template that I can use. However, those templates can sometimes confuse an applicant tracking system or the applicant tracking system will turn it into gobbledygook. Um, you're really best off using a Word document and formatting it yourself. Um, there are lots of examples of what a resume should look like. However, like I said, don't use that template. Go ahead and, and use them as a guide so that you can format that yourself so it will go through that ATS easier. Be honest and make sure your dates are accurate. You don't want to put inaccurate information into your resume. If an employer looks that up and finds out that you did not give them accurate information, it can be the difference between getting the interview and not getting the interview. Um, especially in, in high school, it's really important to focus on any accomplishments you've achieved. You want to talk about the awards and honors, any leadership roles you've taken, any recognitions you've received. In the event that you don't have any work experience um, to date, you haven't had any part-time or summer jobs, this is going to be a main section of your resume. So you're going to have that accomplishments as an actual section in your resume. You want to shine that up, make sure that you're pointing out um, any clubs or activities, advanced classes, anything that shows your involvement and your achievement. You don't want to include soft skills like good time management or multitasking or good communication skills. Those aren't things that belong on your resume. You can highlight those skills in your cover letter, but you don't want to include a section that is full of soft skills like that. However, where you have any kind of certifications, if you're CPR certified, 
uh, or anything like that, then you want to include that as a skill on your resume. Do not include personal information or a picture of yourself on your resume. That can lead to unintentional bias and you don't want to set yourself up for that. References do not belong on the resume either. They go on a separate sheet and are not, not even mentioned on the resume. You don't put a line at the bottom that says references available upon request. Every employer out there knows that if they want to see your references, they can ask for them and you will have them available. You should, however, have those three references available on a separate sheet. So if they are asked for, you are ready to hand them over. And again, just like with that cover letter, you want to have someone proofread it for you. A couple other tips that uh, aren't directly related, but have some indirect uh, um, attention for your resume and your cover letter and specifically for your job search in general. Practice talking about the items on your resume so it's natural for you. You don't wanna have to read your resume to the employer when you're at the inter interview. You wanna be able to speak to it and, and know what the dates are on there and what your accomplishments are. Also, it's a really good idea to tighten up your privacy settings on all your social media platforms. If you wouldn't want your mom to see it, you don't want a potential employer to see it either. Um, so make sure that you tighten up those privacy settings so the only things that are being seen on your social media are the things that you want other people to see. Do your research on the company you are applying to. It's really a good idea to find out a little bit about their history, find out what their mission is, see what they're trying to accomplish, and where you can play a role in their company. It's a really great way to make a good impression during an interview and a great way to be prepared for any questions that they might ask you. Um, another place to look for some great advice is the link that I've offered on this page. And of course, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can certainly get my information from your instructor. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of this and good luck to you in this spring. We want to thank Paula for taking the time to share those tips with us. And now you're going to get to put those into action as you complete an activity that allows you to compare the cover letters, resumes, and digital profiles of various candidates to decide who you would bring in for an interview. The scenario is that you and your team are part of a human resources group in charge of hiring new personnel for your company. Some of your coworkers have been at a career fair looking for possible candidates to work for your company. The company is large with many different kinds of jobs available, so you have a variety of both candidates and job positions available. Today, you and your team will pre-screen three candidates based on their cover letters, resumes, and digital profiles. Your team will decide whether each candidate moves on to an interview based on the personal brand presented in the candidate records. Using the candidate evaluation form on the inside of the packet your teacher will direct you to, rate each candidate's cover letter, resume, digital profile, and other evidence of personal brand. Then decide who, if any, will move on to a face-to-face -face interview. Pause this video to spend some time reviewing the candidate information and then be sure to unpause when you're ready to move on. So what do you think? Are you going to bring them all three back? Are you going to bring just one or maybe none at all? Take a few minutes to pause this video and discuss as a class who you feel should get an interview and why. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation and I'm assuming that you probably came to the conclusion that there are both pros and cons to all of the candidates. So as we're thinking about personal brands, please remember that they are built over time and once damaged can be difficult to repair. That's why it's important to be careful and thoughtful about the personal and professional decisions that you make today. And one thing that we often overlook is social media. So to end out our time together, we're going to hear from JA volunteer Sarah Taylor from CNA Surety, who's going to share some tips about social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, any of those that you guys use are um, resources for employers to look at. Um, employers, scholarship committees, and college admissions do look at that. Um, you know, even if you have your items set to private, I just want you guys to make sure that you think before you actually post. Um, things can go viral in a matter of minutes not hours or days, matter of minutes, um, positive or negative. So if you post something negative, it, it can go viral super quick because people share, tend to share the more negative things 
over the more positive things. You know, if you have one good experience, you're gonna maybe tell one or two people, but if you have a terrible experience, you're gonna tell everyone in the world about your terrible experience. And employers will not hire you because of posts on social media. Anything on social media doesn't only affect you, so like it doesn't only affect myself, it reflects everything that I have on there. So if I do something not very wise and I have my employer on there a CNA surety, someone could go out there and say, hey, oh, I can't believe she did that. Like she put that out there. She works for CNA surety. What kind of people does CNA hire? Like that's, I don't wanna, I don't want that person to be around me and, or I don't wanna hire that person because of that. So same thing with, uh, I work also work for Stronghold Counseling Services. I really also have to watch what I put on my social media because I don't want to someone to look me up on the Stronghold website and say, you know what, let me Google her. She looks interesting. Google me or Facebook find me and they see that maybe I'm not as understanding as Stronghold claims to be which I am, but you know, I'm just saying. It could potentially be that way, but I don't, I'm always very cautious of what I put on, on and share on Facebook um, or any of those. But it does also reflect negatively or positively on the establishment or the situation, location where that situation took place. Um, Make sure that, I mean, you still wanna look at your privacy settings. I would keep everything to private. Um, it's not gonna hurt you to keep things on private. If you keep everything public, people can see it. Anyone can go out and see it. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, do continue, also make sure to change your passwords. Um, don't have the same password for everything because if someone gets into one, then they can get into all of your accounts. Um, make sure that you're not using the same password for multiple accounts. You switch it up, change it. Um, also, make sure that you are careful and cautious as to who you are friends with on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of those things. General rule, if you don't know them, don't add them. Uh, you know, because they could also be, they could be trying to hack you, honestly. Um, you know, and that's just not not something that you would want either. So make sure to keep those in mind, connect with only people you know, if you don't know them, decline their invitation to um, be friends or follow. Um, so before you go posting things on Facebook, I want you to think about who is someone you admire or think highly of. Before you do anything, ask yourself, would this person want you, would you want this person to see it? So would you want your grandpa to see whatever you put on Facebook or your grandma or an auntie or um, whoever you might look up to? Would you want them to see what you posted? If that, if the answer is no, probably shouldn't post it. Because like I said, anything and everything you put online can and will be found by future employers, scholarship people, uh, college admissions, everything. Like I said, it's not anything that, um, that, that cannot be found, so. Thanks again to Sarah for taking the time to record that message for us. I love her point. Who cares, right? Employers do, but so do scholarship committees and college admission offices. There's a lot of people that take a look at social media because it represents you and who you are. So be thinking about that as you move forward with your personal brand.